What's going on guys? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Things We Learned. The show where we go through all the major talking points of the last Chelsea game, even though I don't think any of us really want to do that after yesterday's performance. That game felt like a sick joke. Literally felt like all of the problems from last season just reared their ugly head again. And it was, it, we felt like it, you could have played for another hour or two. Chelsea wouldn't have made another chance. We would have just played the ball between the centre-backs, played it out to the wing, put a cross for nobody to be in the middle of it for, and it would just be rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat, bar the odd little bit of transition play from Nottingham Forest. That game was a disgrace. We have to call it what it is. We should have beaten Forest. I know they're not necessarily an easy team. They can cause problems. But if we're talking about a team that wants to be competing for the top four, we have to be winning these sorts of games. Arsenal beat Forest. United beat Forest. We couldn't even score against them. I think they had like one away win in 22 or something before they came to the bridge. These are the sorts of stats I would have pulled out last season. Not this season. It doesn't make any sense at all. It was a poor performance. A lot of the players, I don't think there was anyone who stood out as crap. But it was just a lot of players who played below par. And like, there's a lot of conversations that we need to try and have. In terms of the game, we had control. We dominated all match. We just never looked like linking it all together in the final third. We'd make good passes and then poor touches would ruin it. Or we'd make passes into the right areas and nobody was in the middle. Or it would be poor deliveries. Or when we would actually make a chance, we'd scuff it. Nothing clicked for us in that game whatsoever. And it was just a disaster from top to bottom. But when everything isn't clicking, you've got to look at the manager a little bit. And he's got to go back to pre-season. I don't know why we're playing so defensively minded. I got it against Liverpool. That made sense. Playing that way against West Ham didn't make sense. Playing that way against um, Nottingham Forest doesn't make sense. They matched us. They played five at the back as well. And then what, we're gonna, what are we going to do? With all of two forwards and a left wing back pretending to be a left winger. And he's just an entire liability in itself. Poch has to go back to pre-season. I need the 4-2-3-1 back. You got no creativity in the middle. You've got isolated forwards. The whole left-hand side is just being nuked by every team that we play because Ben Chilwell is an absolute liability on the left right now. It's not cohesive at all. That leads me on to my second point. This Chilwell left-wing experiment needs to die in this international break. We cannot go back to this. I get why we play him over Mudrick. Mudrick doesn't do enough in his cameos to justify a start. If anything, we nearly conceded a goal twice in the 10 minutes that he was on the pitch because of his laziness in terms of his defensive work rate. Right? So I get why Chilwell starts over him, but Chilwell in himself is a press trigger for every opposition that we face. Chilwell is poor defensively. He gets caught out all the time. His touch isn't good enough. His passing isn't good enough. All he's good for is a couple crosses per game. And fair play to him. In the first half, he had a couple good deliveries in. It doesn't change the fact that over the full 90, he does more bad things than good. Left wing experiment needs to die. Why Ian Matson isn't being given a fair opportunity, I don't understand. I don't get because we'd at least be able to have somebody in that defensively minded team who could step out and play the ball a little bit further forward and they'd have technical security and they'd have the football IQ to be able to make decisions happen. Chilwell ain't got that. Now I know I'm going to have a bunch of simps in the comment section crying and moaning about it until the guy learns how to defend and until the guy can consistently pass the ball. I'm not listening to this conversation anymore. I've tried to talk nicely about it. The fact is game in and game out this guy is underperforming. It's as simple as that. This isn't me trying to run my next agenda or something. You think I want him to play like crap? No. But week in and week out, he's been the weak point. And if Poch keeps playing him, the finger's not pointing at Chilwell anymore. The finger's pointing at the manager because he, he is watching the same things that we are. And he's not changing anything. We need a change after the international break because this leads me to my next point. This is the winnable run of games. This is where we need to pattern up. 
Because if we're still doing this in mid-October, it's going to get very long for us. Arsenal, Aston Villa, City, Brighton, Brentford, Newcastle, Man United. That's our run. Not sure of the order, but those are the teams that we're facing. If we can't handle Nottingham Forest and West Ham. If we can't even do Bournemouth and Fulham. It's long. It's long. Now, before anybody overreacts in the comments section, nobody is saying Poch out. Nobody is saying that. It's Poch fixed the fuck up. It's as simple as that. We aren't Poch out, we're Poch pattern up. And pattern up fast. Because we're talking about top four. We're talking about getting back to where we should be. And we cannot have another year out of the top four. And diverting away from your philosophy is a good way to make sure we don't get anywhere near it. That's the same thing Graham Potter did. Potter came in playing a back five all the time at Brighton. Playing good pro progressive football. What does he do when he comes to Chelsea? He plays a four. And then plays pragmatic as fuck football. Stay within your philosophy. Do what you know. Because that's what we brought you in for. Stop diverting away from it. What are the other points? Zero creativity in the middle, like I said. Cole Palmer has to start the next game. We brought him in to plug in the holes that Nkuku and Chukumeka's injuries have opened up. He has to start. Because there's no creativity in the middle. It's either an Enzo moment of magic or a Sterling moment of magic. Or it's nothing. It's nothing. And again, like it wasn't. It was a lot of players who were poor. Thiago Silva had one of his worst games for us. One of his worst games. Our knee had him on a, in a spliff, all match. And then the mistake for the goal was poor. I, I get him needing to defend himself on Instagram and everything like that. But respectfully, you're getting criticism because you made a mistake that led to a goal and your performance wasn't good enough. You have to firm it. It's as simple as that. It would be the same if it was Thiago Silva, if it was fucking Conor Gallagher, if it was Chilwell, Sterling, anybody. Anybody. You need to perform. It's as simple as that. He weren't the only poor one, though. That that entire first goal was just a, a, lot, a magic amount of effort. Why Gallagher's doing a dummy in our own half, I, I don't even know. Caicedo messes up, Thiago Silva gets nutmeg, Colwell doesn't come back quickly enough, it's just a giant fuck up. But that wouldn't matter if we could bury our chances. And further forward, Jackson was just left heavily isolated, but he did miss a big chance towards the end of the game. And it's fine when you're scoring chances, but when you're not, it's like you need to finish these chances. I think the thing, and this is my last point, the thing with Nicholas Jackson is we need to figure out what we're doing with him. Do we want him more involved in link-up play or do we want him in goal-scoring positions? Because you're not going to get both with him right now. Now, in time, he might be able to improve his game. But as of right now, I think you're only getting one or the other. So you need to make a decision. Are we playing to feed, to feed Nicholas Jackson or is Jackson helping to feed somebody else? And if he's feeding somebody else, who is that? Because I see a lot of times Jackson's coming back, he's dropping deep, he's driving the ball forward and he's doing well. He's not playing badly, don't get it twisted. But when we have the ball in positions to cross or to lay passes to, he's not there. Because he's further back. So do you want to play him further back or do you want him off the shoulder? We need to figure that one out. But in terms of Jackson, this isn't really criticism. Like, he had his worst game for us, but it's a very low surface area. And to be honest, I still didn't think he was that bad. He was just a bit isolated. Um, and he should have buried that chance at the end. Like, it's a howl of a miss. We'll call it what it is. But, yeah, we'll see what happens with him after the international break. I still have a lot of faith in Nicholas Jackson and his abilities. But this game, not good. A lot of harsh realities came to the surface. Big up to Malo Gusto, who was really good defensively. Big up to Enzo Fernandez. Sterling, I thought, had a good game. Big up to him. Um, Colwell seemed assured. Sanchez, like, other than that bozo moment at the end, I thought he had a good game, in all honesty. So, yeah, I thought he did. Well, everybody else, I need you all to pattern up, please. We'll see what happens after the international break. We will be back for the Blue Balls podcast. Filming that tomorrow, so it should be out on Tuesday. And yeah, hang tight during the international break. This isn't the way we wanted to bow out, but it's what it is. Big up and up the Chelsea.